Hello and welcome to Built and Deployed, a technical video series for cloud architects. My name is Mans Buller, and I'm a distinguished cloud architect on Oracle's cloud engineering team. Today, I am thrilled to be here with Peter Merkert, the co-founder and CTO of Retraced. We're here to talk about how Peter and his team help fair trade fashion brands and sustainable textile producers verify and track certificates of material authenticity using Retraced's blockchain platform. Peter, can you spend a few minutes to walk through the architecture that you're using on OCI and describe the business and technical advantages behind the design? A client is utilizing uh, our platform. So for example, a fashion brand logs in or raw material producer and wants to upload a certificate. What is happening once a request is uh, made, it's actually going towards our load balancer again, API.retrace.co. It is resolved towards one of the instances of compute randomly, again, by Kubernetes is distributing the traffic automatically. And then it's actually within each compute instance, again, redistributing this traffic automatically towards one of the pods available. And what is a pod? A pod is a single execution of a Node.js instance in our case, because we develop our whole um, architecture with Node.js. So we can just define, hey, Cuba needs, we need, for example, eight pods available. They will automatically distribute it within Cuba needs over the compute instances available. And whenever there's some traffic incoming, it says, okay, take one of the pods available in one of the compute instances. And this is where actually the request will be then digested. So for example, you have then an endpoint which says, ah, oh, okay, incoming request, uh, a certificate wants to be updated or created. Let's say the case created. Uh, what this bot is actually doing now, it's uh, starting to make the request towards the database. How has a managed Kubernetes service made um, your life easier? Ultimately, what does it mean as founder of a company as well and business value? Where I'm business value focused, it means I can save some money because I do not have to hire someone dedicated to maintain my uh, underlying uh, infrastructure. But I can say, hey, I have a managed Kubernetes cluster. It just works out of the box. I get it. And uh, usually what it also does, uh, covering a line and a tiny bit, is already giving a kind of standard set of security, which I have to be honest, otherwise I would need to read myself in if I just started out, whereas this is given out of the box. Excellent. That's great. Uh, putting us techies out of a business with uh, managed services <laughs> that secure themselves and deploy themselves, I, I think this is definitely the way of the future. So what's happening in this request, we actually go over to the database because the database on the, on the right hand side, we see the block of those. This is actually which we access and we persist the data. So the pods itself, they are mortal by definition. It's a very nice term. It just means they can die anytime. And a fun fact, even if they die during execution, it might be depending how you set it up that Kubernetes is immediately re-executing the same uh, request on another pod, which is really neat because it could be just some error-like uh, infrastructure error, like compute a problem, uh, which ever happened, and it's not a coding issue. So then traffic is redistributed. Now getting over though to the persistent storage, this is uh, which we access through the service gateway. So this is inside of the cloud. We are never going outside of our cloud account and we access all the persistent data and autonomous transaction processing. So you're using both uh, autonomous transaction processing and autonomous data warehousing. So um, were those difficult to set up and, and why, do you, why are you using those services? So uh, why we use the uh, autonomous data warehouse is actually because we are running this blockchain piece, which we can see also depicted on the uh, lower right. So what's actually uh, going on in our whole infrastructure is that everything which we process as information when it comes to the certification creation, for example, we use this uh, blockchain network in order to uh, verify the certificates because what can happen of course on our site is reading our text documents oci and similar technologies are available for that so we get a certificate number but it doesn't state really on this pdf file for example like that is correct i don't have any kind of cross-check mechanism and what's happening is out there there are a lot of certification authorities some of them are not even that advanced for digitalization and even the ones which are advanced do not want to expose the apis publicly because it's one of their main business driver to not expose it however though we have built this blockchain network where we allow them to contribute with one own node um, and what that means is they are participating in the algorithmic validation of the certificate so what's happening on the execution on a single node is we wrote a smart contract or a chain code, how it's, uh, how it's called in Hyperledger Fabric, which is actually used in Oracle blockchain. 
And what's happening in there is this is an agreed piece of code. It's like a rental contract in the end of the day. We both as parties agreed on as I agreed with a certification authority. They said this is valid. And what I can put in a blockchain is a very fine grained government's rule and say that this specific node is authorized to val to verify a specific remote procedure call, for example, for the verification of certification, registration number, or license numbers. So what's actually going on in my system? I read those numbers out. I will forward them to the blockchain, and I will say verify. That will actually issue through all the nodes, also my own, but I can't verify because I don't know if this is valid or not. But the verification will happen through their own node that they can put secrets in to access actually their external API. And this is a very, very neat solution because they still don't have to open up the API to, to us. They just store the secrets that they can put them themselves. It's just going through a chain code, which I've written, we as parties agreed on. A government's rule we have as parties agreed on, and this is our set in stone. And then the certification is actually verified and valid, um, checked for validity. Now, uh, coming back to the autonomous data warehouse, this is actually the neat piece now because Running through a blockchain already sounds big. We are talking here about nodes. We have an ordering services. There are a lot of other bits and pieces actually in a blockchain network, which make it a little bit more complicated. And obviously that you can already imagine making a call against it just to get data out is very heavy uh, in compute resource. So what Oracle has actually done, they have made an, I would say, in-cloud interface between the blockchain and the autonomous data warehouse to just connect them with one click. I just say, go to that exact database and it's synchronizing all the data over. Now, this is very neat because now in a data warehouse, this is common PLSQL, for example, I could execute something very easy. Um, well, it's coming in actually in a blockchain table in this um, database, which is also a very great addition recently. I can convert that though. I can convert the JSON as a, however I want um, and then just process it further. This has been Built and Deployed. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more technical conversations with OCI customers.